Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In today's video, we're going to be tackling an under-discussed and yet super important topic, sexual dysfunction and multiple sclerosis. Sexual health is a vital aspect to overall well-being, and unfortunately, MS can impact it in several different ways. Together, we're going to game out solutions. Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Before we discuss the various causes of sexual dysfunction in multiple sclerosis, I think it's helpful to review the basic mechanics of sexual function. There are three stages, arousal, and then achieving physical readiness, and lastly, orgasm. Let's take each one in turn. Number one, arousal. This starts in the brain, where sensory inputs and emotional cues can trigger a response. Next is achieving physical readiness. For gentlemen, this would involve obtaining and maintaining an erection, and for women, this would involve vaginal lubrication. And number three, orgasm, which involves coordination of muscle and nerve activity, leading to sexual climax. Now notice that all of these steps involve the intricate communication of the brain, spinal cord, and the rest of the body. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic condition where the immune system attacks the central nervous system, disrupting the flow of information from the brain and spinal cord. This can result in directly or indirectly impairing sexual function. And sexual dysfunction in MS is way more common than you might think. Many studies suggest that upwards of 70% of people impacted by MS have some degree of sexual dysfunction. Let's break this down, thinking about primary, secondary, and tertiary causes of sexual dysfunction in MS. Primary sexual dysfunction is where the immune system's damage to the central nervous system literally interferes with the circuitry of sex. This can result in gentlemen having difficulty obtaining or maintaining an erection, women having difficulty with arousal and vaginal lubrication, and making orgasm nearly impossible or literally not achievable. Secondary sexual dysfunction is where symptoms caused by MS can interfere with the ability to enjoy intercourse. For example, pathologic fatigue, or spasms of your leg, or neuropathic pain, or bladder dysfunction makes someone feel not terribly sexy. This can not only cause physical problems, but it can also massively interfere with intimacy with your partner. Tertiary sexual dysfunction speaks to the emotional and psychological aspects of MS, which can interfere with sexual function. Anxiety, depression, and feelings of low self-worth can have a direct negative impact on your desire to be intimate. Literally, patients can feel sickly and not like a sexual being. Now, these feelings are actually really normal to experience, and yet they can create a cycle of avoidance and lead to profound intimate frustrations with your partner. It's not a sign of weakness to reach out for help to improve sexual function. On the contrary, I view it as taking a really large step forward towards self-care. A key element to overcoming sexual dysfunction in MS, which is often overlooked, is involving your partner in the journey. Having open communication with your partner, talking about your feelings, your frustrations, and literally goals of being intimate is critical. And oftentimes partners that team up to do this together end up strengthening their relationship. I recommend having an open and honest conversation with your partner, clothed, not when you're having intercourse. Sit down and discuss goals of intercourse, which might, for example, not be having an orgasm. You might simply want to enjoy being naked and intimate and holding them. Setting up expectations ahead of time can make things much less unpleasant when you're actually engaged in intercourse. Likewise, it's really important to share openly your experiences. Certain things, for example, might hurt or might be really, really uncomfortable, and your partner might not know that. So being open about that is really helpful. Likewise, if there's something that you haven't done, but it might work out well for you, you want to share that ahead of time. This can be a massively important conversation before you enter the bedroom. Number two, schedule time to be intimate. Oftentimes couples will end up having intercourse at the end of the day, after they've been away from each other working all day and after the kids finally go to bed. It might be the very first time they see each other. And yet, that is oftentimes the worst time for my patients with MS to engage in intercourse. 
They've spent all of their energy. They're absolutely exhausted, and all they can think about doing is sleeping. Scheduling intercourse at a time when you have energy and you have the wherewithal to engage can really make a big difference. And you may find early mornings or midday afternoons works much better. Have a conversation and try that out. Work together as a team to research solutions. For example, if sexual stimulation is not adequate to achieve orgasm, you might need to bring an assist device in the bedroom, something like a plug-in-the-wall vibrator and a water-based lubricant, which can massively increase sexual sensation and lead to if you, for example, have spasms and cramps during a normal missionary-style intercourse, you might invest in a sex swing, which removes gravity and makes things much more easy. For example, if tertiary sexual dysfunction makes you not feel like a sexual being, working with your partner and seeing a trained counselor can help you navigate through those emotions. Remember, your partner is your strongest ally. Creating a safe space and sharing your emotions and working through challenges can lead to a much deeper and resilient bond. Next, I'd like to turn our attention to common sexual myths in MS because there's a bunch of them and we're gonna dispel them right now. Number one, people with MS lose all interest in intimacy. False. Number two, sexual dysfunction is only a physical issue. That's simply not the case. And number three, there are simply no treatments for sexual dysfunction in MS. And that's categorically false. In fact, I'm gonna review a bunch of them in this video. So we've listed challenges, we've dispelled a few myths. Let's jump into a discussion of solutions to make the bedroom much better. Now, number one, again, I go back to the importance of open communication with your partner. That literally can't be stressed enough. Now, there are also a host of medical interventions which can help out with sex. For gentlemen that have difficulties with erectile function, they can oftentimes benefit from a pill such as Viagra or Cialis. For gentlemen where that doesn't work, there's another option. It's an injection in the side of the gland's penis. Now, most guys say, no thank you, Aaron, but the reality is that can be extremely effective when those pills don't work. In some severe cases where even that's not helpful, we can go see the friendly neighborhood urologist and with a small surgery, have a penile implant. As one of my urology friends used to say, I can help you get an erection. It just depends on how bad you wanna get one. There's a host of things that we can do for women as well. When trying to address vaginal dryness, Sometimes something as simple as a water-based lubricant can solve the problem. Also, prescription hormone salves and lotions can help. One time a urologist said, just slather it on down there, honey. And quite literally, this can help engorge the tissues, increase blood flow, and massively improve lubrication. For decreased libido in women, there's actually a prescription medicine called Addy, which is a pill taken just once a day. Now this is a really interesting pill. It was developed originally as an antidepressant, and it was a complete failure, but they noticed an interesting side effect during the trial. Women that were taking this pill found that they were more easily sexually aroused, and the manufacturers went back and restudied it, and it's now FDA approved. And so that's something to talk to your doctor about. There's also a host of devices that can massively help out in the bedroom. Primary sexual dysfunction, when there's damage to the brain and spinal cord, can result in a situation where when the down there's are stimulated, there isn't an adequate message to get up to the brain so the brain knows what's supposed to be going on. In these instances, using a water-based lubricant, and as I mentioned earlier, a plug-in-the-wall vibrator, can provide what I call overdrive stimulation. And bringing a plug-in-the-wall vibrator into the bedroom can be a game changer. This is something that you can use during foreplay and you can literally use in between you and your partner during intercourse. Likewise, for gentlemen that have erectile dysfunction, a vacuum pump device can be very, very key. As mentioned earlier, a sex swing can be really useful for MS. Why? Many people impacted by MS have a weak leg or spasms and cramps, and these problems can really interfere with positioning during sex or maintaining a given position for a long period of time. By positioning yourself in a sex swing, you remove that concern. It's easy to change positions and to engage in free-flowing movement, and it can really make the bedroom a much better place. A sex swing isn't expensive, 
and it hooks to an eye bolt in the ceiling, and then you can take it down when you're done. Your children will never know it's there. An underappreciated tool is pelvic floor physical therapy. If you're having trouble with the down theirs, whether that be bowel, bladder, or bedroom, a pelvic floor physical therapist can help reactivate your pelvic floor and help you with all three of those problems. And if you're having difficulty in the bedroom, I would strongly encourage you to ask your neurologist for a referral to a pelvic floor physical therapist. I also have to again bring up the value of therapy. Talk therapy, whether that be talking to a sex therapist or talking to a couples counselor, can be a game changer. Grappling with tertiary sexual dysfunction, working through cognitive behavioral issues, and addressing depression, anxiety, and feelings of self-worth are paramount to success in the bedroom. So that's another tool that you can add to the tool chest. Now there are also a host of behavioral measures, lifestyle changes, which can result in more meaningful intercourse. For example, diet is really important. Helping you lose weight so you're carrying less weight makes you more effective in the bedroom. Avoiding heavily processed foods and sugar-laden foods helps address fatigue. Being adequately hydrated can improve all functions of the nervous system, including sexual function. So take diet seriously. Likewise, exercise to have better sex. Learning to stretch out your limbs and strengthen your core directly results in more meaningful intercourse. So now you have a whole new reason to go to the gym. Also, don't forget the importance of stress management. Practicing daily mindfulness and learning how to minimize or manage your stress can make intercourse a possibility. It's very, very hard to feel sexy when you're profoundly stressed out. Technology can help us as well. There are mobile apps which are free to download on your smartphone. Things like Rosie, which provide resources for sexual education, mindfulness exercises, and relationship tips. And so if you're trying to game out how to be more successful in the bedroom, consider checking out one of those free apps. And lastly, please feel comfortable talking to your MS provider. Sexual health is an important part of overall well-being. And if we're controlling your disease and you're miserable at home, we're not doing our best jobs. I want you to take the first step and say, hey doc, I'm having difficulties in the bedroom. Now if your neurologist gets bristly and doesn't know what to do, okay. Say, hey look, that's no problem doc, but if this is not something that you and I can talk through, would you please refer me to someone who can help? That might be a urologist, it might be a pelvic floor physical therapist, it might be a counselor. The point is, I'm asking you to bring it to the attention of your provider so that we can help you better access healthcare and in turn, do better in the bedroom. Sexual dysfunction in MS is a challenge, but it's not insurmountable. By understanding the causes and exploring solutions, you can reclaim this important aspect of your life. And please remember, you're not alone. There are resources and people here to help you. As always, this is Aaron Boster saying thank you for learning about MS with me. And if you'd like to continue to learn and up your game and figure out other ways of beating MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, be safe and take care.